Jones, W5. Hailed as a miracle worker, he promised to help them have children. Hi, big brother. But delivered heartbreak. I mean, I was horrified. Avery Haynes investigates a respected fertility doctor with a dark secret. How many brothers and sisters do you have? There are 11 of us. Decades of trust crumble. There were most likely others. I don't think this is something you do once. Strangers are drawn together by a doctor's deceit. I think it is a huge violation. And families struggle to stay together. He's still my dad. He's always been my dad. After learning the terrible truth. Those children are not their biological children. And pot revolutionary Tommy Chong. Oh, I smoked that one joint and it just changed everything. Is on a roll and high on life. What are they going to do, put you in jail? Kevin Newman with a pop culture rebel. Does this happen to you everywhere you go now? Yes. From Motown to movie star. The Mauricia Marijuana, the Pope of Dope, Cheech and Chong. One life-changing moment. It gave me a joint and a Lenny Bruce record at the same time. The high <laughs> times and low points. They just wanted to put Tommy Chong in jail. And the rocky road to legalization. It's a little green flower that gives us the power. Here is Kevin Newman. Hello, and thanks for joining us. He was a pillar of his community, a man so widely respected, he received the Order of Canada. But DNA testing, which is now available to anyone who wants to trace their family roots, has cast his accomplishments in a much more sinister light. As W5's Avery Haynes investigates, Ottawa's once top fertility expert now faces a growing number of names claiming he went far beyond what a doctor should do. Rebecca Dixon and Kat Palmer are headed for an unlikely reunion on Vancouver Island. They've traveled all day to be here. These two long-lost sisters only found out about each other recently. They each grew up in Ottawa, thinking they were an only child. And this journey is the result of the actions of one fertility doctor. I was pretty horrified. I remember this sort of wave of shock kind of going through me. And I think it is a huge, a huge violation. A violation that began for Rebecca's parents, Dan and Davina, when they got pregnant with her 28 years ago. We wanted a child, so we- wanted we, children. Children, we didn't want just one, we wanted children. After an excruciating eight years of trying, their prayers were answered. The Dixons were referred to a man known as the baby god, Dr. Norman Barwin. He was described to us as, if anybody in the world could get us pregnant, he could. And if he couldn't get us pregnant, yeah. nobody could. Very last chance. The Dixons were told they were good candidates for a procedure that involved using Dan's own sperm to get Davina pregnant, and it worked. Can you guys tell me about the moment you find out that you are finally gonna have a oh child? Oh my. It was so exciting. I, you cannot believe how excited I was. I was just flying for... Nine months. For nine months. <laughs> Dr. Norman Barwin was Ottawa's preeminent fertility doctor from the 1970s to 2014. The father of four was a beloved philanthropist in Ottawa's Jewish and arts communities. B. Norman Barwin. Dr. Barwin was even awarded the Order of Canada for his work in 1997. But despite all this, he was carrying a very dark secret, one the Dixons could never have imagined. Their baby book is a snapshot of their world before it fell apart. First impressions, mum's comments. I shed many tears, but all because you're exactly what I wanted. I'm so glad we kept trying. They said you looked like. Dad, dad, no doubt about it. Dan and Davina doted on Rebecca. My dad is really hilarious. Um, he was always the one with the crazy stories and ideas. We did a lot of things together. We would cook together and bake together. Hello, my love. 
That happy family was blindsided in 2016 when they learned Dan, the man who had raised Rebecca, was not her biological father. The shocking revelation came after Rebecca was diagnosed with a hereditary gluten intolerance, celiac disease, which does not show up in the Dixon family tree. The results of a paternity test left the family shattered. And when you're looking at that paternity test that says that Dan is not your biological father, this man who raised you, who you love, what are the things that go through your mind? For the first week or so, I felt very dissociated with my face, my body. It was suddenly that these, these features and physical characteristics that had always been mine might actually belong to someone else out there, and I didn't know who it was. Did you feel in a blink of an eye cut out and removed from this family of three that somehow now you're not a part of it? For such a tiny, tiny bit of time. And every so often it slips in. And you know, it's either 100% in or, and, or nothing. Like, I'm not her father, but I'm 100% her father. Yeah. I'm not her dad, but I'm 100% her dad. And I think there was definitely some pressure in those first months to sort of prove that it wouldn't change anything and it, it doesn't matter. You know, my dad is still my dad. Meanwhile, on the other side of the country, in British Columbia, Kat Palmer was dealing with an equally shocking discovery. She knew her parents had used a fertility doctor in Ottawa. She was told she'd been conceived with a sperm donor who was of German and Irish descent. Kat wanted to find other people who were conceived from that same donor. So she did a DNA test. My results came back Ashkenazi Jewish, so I knew it couldn't have been the donor that my parents picked. Trying to solve the mystery of just who her biological father might be, Kat put her DNA up on an Ancestry website. After months of waiting, finally a breakthrough. A man who was a genetic match contacted Kat, and he dropped this bombshell. They were both related to each other and to Dr. Norman Barwin. He recognized Dr. Barwin's name right away, and he recognized it because Dr. Barwin was actually a very close family member of his. So in this DNA registry, mm -hmm. you're contacted by someone who's a relative of Dr. Barwin and says, we're a match. And you think what? The pieces all started fitting together. In my mind, right away, it was Dr. Barwin. Kat had the same biological makeup as her parents' fertility doctor. She sent an email to Norm Barwin. You've kept a bunch of email exchanges that you had, right, that's sort of almost like a map of the very beginning of your discovery. Dear Dr. Norman Barwin, I am writing this letter because I have found information that makes me believe that I am genetically your descendant. And now, is this the email that he replied back? Yeah, so this was a couple hours later on the same day. Dear Kat, please contact me on my phone number. Uh, and then he lists that. Incredibly, in that phone call, Dr. Barwin agreed to a DNA test. The results were irrefutable. The so-called baby god was Kat's father. Kat, I would love to resolve this, but hope you can appreciate what I am afraid would be the impact on my family and their feelings towards me. My compensation for this inadvertent medical error is that you have been so successful in your career, but more importantly, you are a sensitive and special person. Kat contacted a lawyer. They had a client who was a girl around my age, born at the same time, who was suspicious that Dr. Barwin was her biological father. That client was Rebecca Dixon. A test confirmed that the two women were in fact half-sisters. Dr. Barwin was also Rebecca's biological father. I, I mean, I was horrified. Um, it, It was, it's such an intrusive, intimate kind of thing because it's my very DNA. Um, it's very integrated into who I am and yet there's nothing I can do about it. And so to imagine someone who had done this thing had it sort of inserted himself into my life and that I had this connection with him was pretty horrifying to me at first. 
They may have been horrified at the way they became sisters, but Rebecca and Kat relished in finding each other. They began texting and Skyping almost daily. We're just so similar. I think Kat and I have very similar kind of bubbly personalities. We both laugh a lot. We both giggle the same way. <laughs> we both play with our hair the same way. We both talk with our hands. <laughs> Their emotional first meeting was captured on cell phone video. These two young women, who lived their entire lives believing they were only children, would later discover they actually went to the same Ottawa high school and likely passed each other in the hallways. But Kat wondered in the back of her mind whether Dr. Barwin, the so-called baby god, might have secretly used his own sperm more than just twice. I think at that point I knew that there were most likely others. I don't think this is something you do once or twice. It turns out Kat was right. What has unfolded, the scope of what was allegedly done over decades, is almost incomprehensible. How many brothers and sisters do you have? There are 11 of us at the moment. At least 11 people all conceived using their fertility doctor's genetic material. The siblings tracked down with the help of DNA tests and online family trees. Does it matter to you the reason why he did this? I think that's the big question. I don't think we're ever going to know why and how this happened. I think anyone who was ever a patient really should be aware that this is a possibility for them and uh, that now is the time that they can get answers. An unapologetic doctor. Be happy with the child that they have and enjoy that child. Leaves victims unsatisfied. I would love to see him in jail. When W5 continues. Twenty-seven-year-old Rebecca Dixon never thought she'd be the face of a class action lawsuit. But when she learned that her parents' fertility doctor, Norman Barwin, had used his own sperm sample instead of her dad's, the Dixons contacted a lawyer. Since the class action suit was launched in 2016, the number of so-called Barwin babies has grown to at least 11. And dozens more have now joined the suit because Dr. Barwin's disturbing legacy extends beyond the children he secretly fathered. What do you know about the way that you were conceived? What were you told in, in, in about this as you were growing up? That I was mixed in a Petri dish, and that's kind of it. Um, my sister was conceived naturally, so we had the science baby and then the miracle baby, and I was the science baby and she was the miracle baby. Taylor Parsons' mother, Lisa, remembers thinking she had won the golden ticket when she got an appointment with fertility specialist, Dr. Norman Barwin. Everybody talks about Dr. Barwin, you know, the baby god, and it, didn't take, I think it was three treatments that, uh, that uh, we found ourselves pregnant. Look at this one of me and Dad, Riley. Lisa believed she got pregnant using her then-husband Ron's sperm. And the child they spent years trying to conceive was born in 1999. Then, in the spring of 2017, Lisa read about Rebecca Dixon's class action lawsuit. She contacted the lawyers and arranged a paternity test. And you got the results before Taylor got the results. Was, I, I was hit, like I, 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 didn't, I didn't know what to do. I didn't even know how to, to react. I felt like I was hit by a truck. What so. did the letter say? There was 0% probability that there was a familial relationship between Taylor and Ron. It was tough, sorry, a tough call because uh, my first reaction, of course, my first thought is Taylor. My second thought was, oh my God, this is Ron's he no longer has this connection with Taylor, and uh, this is going to blow his world. Can you take me to that moment where your mom and dad sit you down and tell you the most earth-shattering thing that probably you've ever heard in your life? I managed to get at what before I burst into tears, was basically how that went. And then I cried for a while, and my dad held my hand. And are you looking at your dad and thinking, but you're my dad? He's still my dad. He's always been my dad, always will be my dad. The next step was to test Taylor against Kat Palmer and Rebecca Dixon to see if she was yet another Barwin sibling. We were able to um, test against Rebecca and Kat and know that she's not Dr. Barwin's, which was 
you know, uh, to me, was a huge sense of relief. Um, Why was it a relief that Dr. Barwin was not your biological father? Well, I didn't want to be related to somebody who could do that. I don't know if that sounds bad, but that's the honest truth. I didn't want to be related to him. Those results, though, opened up even more questions. Whose sample was used to conceive Taylor? The shocking reality, it could have been any man connected to Dr. Barwin's practice over his nearly 40-year career. Is there the hope, though, that in some way, Norm Barwin will be forced to provide information that could lead you to find your biological father? I don't think the information exists. From what I understand, um, he didn't keep good records, so I, don't, I just don't think it exists. We may never learn what motivated Norman Barwin, but one of the lawyers behind the class action, Frances Shapiro-Munn, hopes the courts will order some answers for her clients. One of the things that strikes me about this case, again, being a civil lawyer, that primarily my job is supposed to be getting people money, but I don't know that I've ever been part of a case that was less about money. One of the things that we're working on right now and, and we're in discussions with, it, with a company is setting up a DNA database so we could test people amongst each other. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. The reason they need a database? This case has ballooned to at least 50 people who were all conceived through mixed up sperm samples. There are a number of groups of alleged victims within this class action filing. Among the claims, that children were secretly conceived using Norm Barwin's own sperm. And then there are the cases of children who were conceived with unknown samples. They don't know who their fathers are. And then the heartbreaking group of men who went to Norm Barwin to store their sample before undergoing medical treatments that left them infertile. So usually a cancer diagnosis means treatment that will leave you impotent. So they would store their sperm with Dr. Barwin. And we do have a number of cases where after the men went back and used their sperm and were successful in conceiving, have now found out that those children are not their biological children. They have to come to terms with the fact that this child that they love is not their biological child. And they also have to come to terms with the fact that they've now lost their opportunity to have any biological children and come to terms with the possibility that their sperm that was stored may have been used to impregnate a stranger. That's right. That's right. Before his stunning fall from grace, Dr. Norman Barwin was an adored and prominent figure. But there were signs that it was too good to be true. Three separate lawsuits, all alleging sperm sample mix-ups, had been quietly settled out of court. The first dates back to 1995. Despite all that early legal trouble, the College of Physicians and Surgeons only ever sanctioned Barwin with a two-month license suspension. Dr. Barwin has never publicly explained how this could have happened, but W5 has obtained this never-before-seen interview conducted in the midst of one of those lawsuits in 2009. This is my worst nightmare. I mean, that's, this is not the thing one ever wants to happen. And I, I was very upset. I do this every day of my life. And over 30 years, this, is, um, the, this, is, this has happened without, not because of malice, but because of any other reason. It's just, it's one of those things that the last thing one wanted to happen has happened. Dr. Barwin goes so far as to imply that his patients should just be happy to have conceived. I hope, you know, after the, the hurt that there has been, is that they will be happy with the child that they have and enjoy that child. In 2014, Norm Barwin resigned his medical license in the wake of the media attention from those early lawsuits. Since then, 50 people have come forward to join this class action. Each of them has just one question, why? Dr. Barwin refused W5's request for an interview, so we went to his home in Ottawa. Mr. Barwin, Mr. Barwin, hi, how are you? My name is Avery Haynes, and I'm a reporter with CTV's W5. Yeah. And I was hoping that we could speak to you for just a couple of minutes. No, really, I've got no comment. Really. To come to my home is really not fair. It's not fair for all of the people who were just mm -hmm. hoping that you would provide a DNA sample, mm -hmm. or at least to give them some closure as to what the reason was for this. No, no, please don't put me in this situation. I... After a few minutes, Barwin finally offered this. Was it just something as simple as that, that you just wanted to help them have a child? It was basically the reason here, so I've said more than I have to say. I, I, 
It's, I've always wanted just to help people. That's, and that's what I can say. Do you understand how painful this is for so many people, though? I understand. I know what I'm going through. That's, that's... What he's going through is the last thing on the minds of those whose lives Barwin has turned upside down. Dan Dixon, whose daughter Rebecca was secretly conceived with Dr. Barwin's sperm, wants him charged criminally. I would love to see him in jail, even if it was for a weekend. You know, something to that he, he damaged us. And Davina, I'm trying to imagine the feeling of violation that you must have felt. Dan would like me to see if I can press rape charges. I can't go there. I can't because I will be bitter. I will be angry. What do you hope happens through all of this, Davina? From the very beginning, we decided to follow the path that Rebecca wanted to take. She wants any children that may be suffering the same consequences to find out, and sooner rather than later. Rebecca's path lead plaintiff in a very public class action suit. While lawyers work behind the scenes, some of the so-called Barwin children are getting to know each other. Rebecca has traveled from Ottawa to Victoria to meet her half-brother James for the very first time. Hi, big brother. Their half-sister Kat lives nearby in Vancouver and has met him before. Thank you. We've chosen to say, yeah, you're my brother. Yeah, you're my sister. We're like claiming each other. Yeah, it is. It, yeah. It's kind of neat, isn't it? Actually, I never thought about the significance of the title, I guess. Yeah. So much. I now know that you're going to be in my life for forever and yeah. we're going to see each other again somehow. Even though this is a happy reunion, James is angry about the way they were all conceived. I'm pissed off. <laughs> I am. I'm totally. It's fair, yeah. yeah. I feel like every one of us, it's a weird thing. Every one of us, our mothers came in to get pregnant and they did, but they didn't get pregnant the way they all exactly. were planned. Yeah. I feel like had, had he done it physically instead of using a medical instrument, it would have been a dozen counts of rape. But there's no law against this. There's no repercussions on this. You can do whatever you want. It is a terrifying thing. These three people who share the same father can't escape the genes that were passed on to them in the most twisted of ways. They are the only ones who can fully relate to what the others are going through. What troubles them is how far reaching this may be. As the case has grown and grown, and we know how, how many people yeah. were affected and in so many different ways, and then that, that pulls in their families, their parents, their mm -hmm. siblings, their children. That's what has increased my anger over time, maybe, is just how could you do this to this many people? Well, the class action lawsuit hasn't been certified by a court for it to proceed. And W5 also reached out to Ottawa police to see if Dr. Barwin has ever been under investigation. They would only say that no criminal charges have ever been laid against him. Here's what's straight ahead. Taking a hit for his rights. This is kind of part of the drug war. You know, it's, it's a culture war. Leads to respect and other benefits. This is the best publicity I could ever get. When W5 continues.